Jesus, and we focused on we are focused on justice. We are a multi-ethnic, inclusive faith community. I'm Reverend Lynn Smouse Lopez, and I'm the pastor of this wonderful congregation. And we welcome you. We welcome you all. But I particularly want to welcome the press. I know there's press with us. And we want to welcome you and thank you for all the work you do. You take risks to bring us the news. You keep us informed. And we thank you for the work that you are about. We also welcome our commissioners. We thank you that you have chosen to serve us in public service. We thank you for, the taking, for taking the time to be here with us and for working for a better Portland. And I also want to thank all those responsible for today, for Reverend Catherine Alder, who brought us this inspired idea of the T-shirt memorial, for Judy Petrie, who has orchestrated and collected names and made sure this happens, for Marvin Lynn, who contacted the commissioners, for Janine Delaney, Reverend Janine Delaney, who's on the committee and helped, for Eldon Potter, whose graphic gifts made the T-shirts and made sure we had a banner to put up. And most importantly, I want to thank Allison Brinkhorst, and her wife, Becca Schultz, who worked long and hard driving stakes, cutting pipes, designing the, the, the places to put the t-shirts on. We are here, friends, to install the t-shirt memorial because we want to remember black and brown people who have lost their lives, who have died at the hands of Portland police. We want to make sure that we do not forget them as we also remember George Floyd, who just about a year ago was killed by a Minnesota police officer. He, that officer was supposed to protect him, not murder him. We invite you, if you hear of other names that we do not have, others black and brown folks who have been killed by po Portland police, to give us the names afterwards, and we will be glad to add t-shirts not happy that there are more names. We are here to remember so we can work for change. We are here to remember so we can transform our community, our city, and so that all can feel safe and protected, so that none feels endangered because of the color of their skin. Thank you so much for joining us. And now I'd like to introduce, thank you. I would like to introduce one of the newest commissioners, uh, Ming Mr. Mingus Mapes. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Great. Well, um, I'd like to start out this afternoon by uh, saying this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ainsworth United Church of Christ, for inviting me to share this moment with you. Thank you for all the good work you do. And thank you for remembering the anniversary of George Floyd's murder. And thank you for helping, remember, helping us all remember all of the other black and brown victims of police violence. You know, over the past year, there's been a great awakening here in the United States. For the first time in a long time, many Americans have really seen the violence that looms over the lives of people of color. For example, over the past 365 days, more than 80 Portlanders have been murdered. Uh, more than half of them have been people of color. Um, in fact, homicide rates here in Portland have more than doubled in the past year. The rise in homicides has many causes. COVID, of course, closed schools, poverty, desperation, domestic violence, gang violence, and police violence. People of color in the United States face a paradox when it comes to um, policing. We are both under-policed and over-policed. People of color are more likely to be the victims of street crime 
than their white counterparts. At the same time, we are more likely to be the victims of police violence than our counterparts. And as a black dad of two brown boys, I have skin in this game. But we all have skin in this game. You know, a bullet travels at about 1,800 miles an hour. And a bullet moving at that speed does not discriminate on the basis of race. And that's one of the many reasons why I appreciate Ainsworth United Church of Christ for bringing us together today. In order to end violence, be it violence committed by individuals or violence committed by institutions, we must first see that violence. And then we must hold each other accountable for making change. And we're here today because each of us has finally seen the violence. And we're here today because each of us in our own way feels compelled to do something to end that violence. Now, um, like you, I know that the work of ending violence in our community can at times feel overwhelming. Sometimes Portland feels like a contentious community, but I also come here bearing good news. Um, thanks to my privileged perch, I can see consensus where many others may only see conflict. I think Portland is and aspires to be a kind, connected, caring community. I think we all want a Portland that embraces our diversity. I think Portland wants a public safety system that emphasizes prevention and rehabilitation. And I think that we all believe our police department should be a tool for dismantling racism, not perpetuating it. And the work of dismantling racism begins with seeing racism. And that is one of the many reasons why I appreciate sharing this moment with you today. Thank you, Ainsworth United Church of Christ, for helping Portland see the violence that looms over black and brown lives. Thank you for holding me and society accountable for ending the violence. And thank you for um, all the work you do. I want each and every one of you to know that I see you. And I, as I stand here today, I also want you to know that I feel seen by you. Thank you for that. And God bless you. Peace. Thank you. And now we will have a, a song, a gift of music from Cynthia Butts. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my Be a God somewhere over my head. I hear singing in the air over my head. I hear singing. God somewhere no more guns we 
just want to live in peace. No more guns. No more killing by police. No more guns. We just want to live in peace. Oh, we just we want to live in peace. We remember you who were taken to soon. We remember. taken way too soon we remember you who were taken way too soon we remember you and honor you this afternoon Thank you. And now I invite Commissioner Rubio to come up. Thank you, everyone, for gathering here today. Um, it's such a blessing to be able to be here with you in person and in our hearts right now. I also want to take a moment to really appreciate Reverend Smas Lopez and the family members and friends that are here today, and also the members of Ainsworth, Ainsworth Church for lifting up this moment. These losses are painful, but we remember these individuals for their vibrant, full lives. Individuals who laughed, loved their families, and no doubt had plans for their lives. Their time in this world was cut way too short by institutions that failed them, failed to keep them safe and their families too. When we step back and look at the systemic effects of this uniquely American pattern, it's horrifying to recognize its presence in our beloved city. And it's the reason why thousands of Portlanders and, and around the world continue to call for justice for black lives to this day. And while I cannot ever fully understand this painful loss, I bear a deep responsibility to prevent it, not only as an elected official, but in my personal lives and in how I pass it on to the little ones in my life. And so should we all. We as a community demonstrate respect and honor to families by forcing ourselves, our neighbors, our leaders and our institutions to hold up a mirror to see who we are and how our systems reflect that. And to recognize th that the cost of doing nothing sticks with surviving families and black, indigenous, people of color communities, generation after generation. It is our responsibility right now to be truthful, to see the humanity in the life in the victims and to bring community and leadership into alignment around systemic change that is real, that is visible, and that is lasting. We can start walking that talk and living up to our values as we Portlanders express that we believe in, like authentically engaging with community to reimagine community safety together and to work with partners to make long overdue visible structural changes to our public safety system. Let's pour our love and energy into creating an environment where all our communities feel safe and thrive 
and where the totality of people's lives aren't reduced to a singular tragic moment. Let's finish what Portlanders have asked us to do and develop a new community-centered, culturally responsive way of doing business in the city of Portland and creating safety for all our communities. One that recognizes the humanity and contributions of black and brown communities and sees us all as worthy of dignity and respect and of joy and of love. This is how we honor and see the families who are here today and the individuals who we lift up in this dedication today. Thank you again for coming together today and recognizing these individuals and giving them the dignity of seeing the impact of their lives on this community. So let's pray for Portland and let's pray for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carmen Rubio. And now I'd like to introduce to you my colleague, uh, most of you know, Reverend Cecil Prescott, who will be reading the names. At this time, we'll read the names of victims. And have T-Search place. Kenny Allen. Aaron Marcel Campbell. Andre Gladden Sr. Juanice Hayes.
Byron Clay Hammock. Joe Hopkins. Kendra James. Ricky Charles Johnson. Terrell Kareem Johnson. Mr. Joe Bean Keller will place the T-shirt of his son, Deontay Joseph Keller. Patrick Kimmons.
Charles Menefi. Keaton Dupree Otis. James Jahar Akbar Perez. Jose Santos Victor Mejia Put. Lloyd Tony Stevenson. Jason Washington. Irvin Jones.
Thank you. And now we, I'd like to introduce Commissioner Dan Ryan, who will speak with us. I think he's here. Or is he not? Okay. Then we will go on. Reverend Cecil? I'm looking for Joseph Bean Keller. You would like a couple of, share a couple of words? Thank you very much, um, Cecil, Reverend. Um, my, like I said, my name is Joe Bean Keller, and you see my shirt is a little bit different than everyone else because I kind of had that made myself for my son a little while back. Because 25 years ago, February 28, 1996, Officer Terry Kruger shot my son in the back and murdered him, and they left him to die. But 25 years later, as justice is continuously prevailing itself, because if you have faith and patience, as I do, as God gives us, justice will come back around. Things will come back around. And so now, 25 years later, as a fallen officer, because Terry Kruger had went out to West Lynn to be the police chief, after a big investigation that was a part of the DOJ that involved the untold story of Deontay J. Keller. You can look that up. Go to DeontayJKeller.com, and it tells you about the conspiracy to cover up the murder of Deontay. All that was a part of the DOJ investigation, so he is now a fallen officer. And we are going after him for murder charges because there are no stipulation on murder. So as a fallen officer, a civilian, Terry Kruger will be going up for murder charges. So be looking for the campaign because we will be having a petition coming out soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Callo. And now Commissioner Ryan will sh share a few words. Hello, it's um, it's really good to be home. Um, some of you don't know, but I was a thank. Thank you. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of time in this church, um, and I'll just tell a little bit of story about that because it's such an honor to be back at Ainsworth. So it was in 1996, I believe, the two of you were on KBU. I just moved back home. I came home because I was told by a doctor I had six months to live. I have, HIV, I have HIV, and I was listening to KBU, and they were talking about becoming a multi, uh, they were going to hold space, become a welcoming space, welcoming church for people who are gay, and further, they were going to open up an HIV day center. So even though I'd been dabbling in New Thought churches or very liberal Catholic churches most of my life, I thought, I'm going to try out this Ainsworth United Church of Christ. So I, I showed up. And my first encounter was I sat next to this uh, woman. Her name was Edith Anderson. Rest in peace. She died in uh, 2015. And it was Mother's Day. And uh, the tradition here is to give a different color if your mother had passed. My mother passed when I was young. And then uh, she said, well, I've had more uh, loss than that. And I believed her. And I, now knowing her later on, I thought that was a very big share for her to tell me that. And so, and so my relationship with Ainsworth began. And I wanted to give you that to say what a beautiful place that you, you're on sacred ground. 
of course they're having they're they're leave, they're allowing voice for parents like the one who just spoke people who are connected to the t-shirts that are here this church holds so much it expands its love constantly yes I've witnessed and I've experienced police brutality and I sh certainly know I'm white and I have witnessed and believed my black and brown friends and families who've told me about their stories I believe my african-american friends mothers who talked to me about the pain this for decades about what it's like to raise a son and be worried every time they leave the house I believe them we believed the footage we saw in the 90s of Rodney King in LA and some of us thought oh good finally there's documentation things are going to change and I'm glad you read the names today I'm grateful we're taking time take a breath because it just keeps happening man there was a difference last year when over nine minutes of coverage allowed us to see the murder the murder of George Floyd maybe it's because it was it was filmed every second of it and also because we were all quarantined and people were just looking at things on social media like never before so it wasn't a surprise that this went from Minneapolis to all through the country all through the world and then finally, finally, a verdict came that we could all get behind. Yes, he was guilty. And boy, was he guilty. And boy, did we all just have a little bit, a tiny bit of relief that finally there was some justice. But family, I want to talk to you about also the importance of going from slogans to solutions. We've got to go beyond the internet dialogue the shaming and blaming and move towards a place again where we hold we allow churches to hold the truth we allow churches to be a part of the solution because the truth is my friend Edith Anderson let me loop back to that when I got to know her better and I spent Thanksgiving with her once she was showing me old photos photos of her son her son passed her son died young it was hard for her to look at those photos she showed me one of him being ordained, being uh, into the Boston police force. That was the photo she was most proud of. I'll never forget the day we took that to a frame shop and got it, we got it put together. So in this church, there are elders who have sons that have been on police force, just as there are many in this church that have witnessed and experienced their children's police brutality the nuance the complexity of that is true is Ainsworth going to hold all of that is Ainsworth going to hold all of those stories I ask you all please say amen culture change does not happen by one policy it doesn't happen because of one protest it happens from the ground up it happens in dialogue not in shaming and blaming it happens in places like Ainsworth where there's where there's people holding all of this complexity can we say amen to that and I know Ainsworth holds people I know that because I experienced it in my 15 years, I was pretty active, wasn't I? Yeah, I was on the usher board. Edith made me, and I said yes. I went through two divorces, countless ridiculous relationships, lost my dad, lost my auntie after my mom died young, lost three siblings. I was a mess, but I was able to come to Ainsworth and be held and be seen. The main reason I left is because I got into a 12-step recovery group, thank goodness. This commissioner is in recovery, thank you. 
<laughs> it's better to be treated than toxic, right? Amen? Ah, please, people. This is a place that holds people, that doesn't shame people. And this is exactly the type of sacred space that we need to heal our city and heal the cultural challenges that we face, which are opportunities. The most beautiful story about my relationship with Edith is her explaining what it was like for the African-American church to be integrated with the predominantly Caucasian church. I, I didn't even know this, but I found out early on that she was the, one of the main resistors to becoming a welcoming uh, church and had a lot of fear about HIV. Is God still speaking or what? Why did I sit next to her? Amen? All right. My, po my point is we are moving from a police force to a peace force. Yes, we will. Don't hope. Do it. Be it. Take action. And action sometimes means sitting across from somebody and not prejudging them, but listening to them. Listen to their stories. The majority of us want a peace force. And the majority of us also want to feel safe. Please don't simplify this complex journey we're on. We need places like Ainsworth United to be the sacred ground where we can come together and hold one another so that we can know that God is still speaking and that it always is going to be a spiritual solution that fuels cultural change. It's so good to be home. I love you all dearly. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Dan. <laughs> Let us pray. Hear our cries, O Lord. For too long, our children have died. For too long, they have been hunted as if they were animals. For too long, we've cried out for justice where there is no justice. And yet, we persist. And though they are no longer able to cry out for justice, we cry out we demand, we protest, we pray, we march. We say their names, Kenny, Aaron, Andre, Quanice, Byron, Joe, Kendra, Ricky, Terrell, Deontay, Patrick, Charles, Keaton, James, Jose, Tony, Jason, Irvin, and names known only to you, 
on this week on the anniversary of the lynching of Mr. Floyd. This week, the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre. We continue to seek justice in our city, in our nation, in our world. Grant us the courage, the strength, the wisdom, the love to continue the work until these victims have justice, until our world, our city, is one where peace and justice is more than a prayer or a hope, but becomes a reality. Hear our prayers, O God of justice. Amen. Thank you. And now I introduce Marvin Lynn, who will close us with a song. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything will be all right. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything will be all right. Fight on just a little while longer. Oh, fight on just a little while longer. Oh, fight on just a little while longer. And everything will be all right. March on just a little while longer. Oh, march on, march on just a little while longer. March on just a little while longer. And everything will be all right. Oh, pray on. Just a little while longer. Oh, pray on. Just a little while longer. Oh, pray on. Pray on. Just a little while longer. And every, 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 everything will be all right. Say it with me. Hold on. Hold on. Just a little while longer. Hold on. Just a little while. Little while. Hold on. Hold on. 
just a little while and everything everything will be all right everything everything will be all right everything everything will be all right everything will be all right thank you all this ends our service. We invite you to linger a bit and look at all the t-shirts. We also invite you, if you're interested in helping curtail other gun violence, that we have some petitions to sign. Uh, one is to ban assault weapons, to get that on the ballot, and the other is to ban high capacity magazines and uh, per require gun permits. Uh, I know there's some here, and Walter Weaver also has them somewhere over there. If you'd like to sign, we invite you to do that if you have not yet, and if you're a voter in Oregon. Thank you all.